Hey, what's up guys, Boborel here, and today I'm going to be giving my first impressions for Insurgency Sandstorm on console. So before I get into this, let me clarify a few things. Firstly, I'm basing my experience on gameplay from a base Xbox One. Currently, I'm waiting for chip prices to drop a bit before I buy a new Xbox or graphics card, and I think there's probably a whole lot of people in the same boat as me right now. So, I still want to make this video to at least show my perspective as a player using last gen hardware. Secondly, I've been playing Insurgency on PC for about a year and a half now, and I have a little over 200 hours. So I'd say going into this, I understood the baseline and core mechanics of the game pretty extensively, and that extra experience definitely helps me judge this title a lot since I have a solid reference point for it. So let's start off by talking about what most people are probably thinking of, performance. Right off the bat, I'm going to say there's still quite a lot to be desired optimization wise. Currently, it's capped at 30 FPS for Xbox One, Xbox One X, PS4, and PS4 Pro but that limit is bumped to 60 on the Series X, S, and PS5. Now, normally, I'm pretty fine with playing games at 30 FPS. 60 is obviously preferred and nice when possible, but you also need to have reasonable expectations for the hardware that you're using. That being said, on Xbox One and Xbox One X, that 30 FPS isn't a stable 30, and there are frequent dips in that depending on what's happening in game. Even still, that's somewhat expected from a base Xbox One. And really, the problem only comes with the Xbox One X, which is what Chris has. That console should be more than capable of playing at a locked, stable 30fps, but all reports I've seen have shown it having reduced, but still pretty common stutters and frame drops. To put that into perspective, on PC I have a mid-level graphics card, the RX 480, and a 4-core processor. I run on medium settings, usually an average of 60fps. But the Xbox One X has a stronger GPU and CPU and can even hold 30. Now of course game optimization works much different on PC versus on console, but still this is clearly a problem. And hopefully this will get smoothed slash ironed out in the same way that they've generally optimized the game on PC. I remember last year the performance was much worse than it is now, with each update making the game more and more stable. So overall, I think there's a lot of work to be done in the performance department, and I'm optimistic that that will get better over time, because the devs have now proven themselves to do so on PC, or at least to a minor degree. Now that that's out of the way, I can get into the more positive slash minor complaints or improvements. Generally, I was immediately surprised at how good the gunplay felt on controller, and it really is a completely different experience to mouse and keyboard. The way certain guns handle is much different with recoil being more difficult to control on sticks, so honestly SMGs and snipers feel much more viable on console than they do on PC, because some guns like the AKM are much harder to use and therefore lose some of their versatility. Really, I feel like balancing wise, recoil being more difficult to control has actually made the game more balanced, letting certain niche guns excel more at their intended purpose. Controls wise, there's a good few options for the way you can adjust your aiming acceleration and sensitivity. Honestly, an impressive amount of options are available, and it definitely makes up for the lack of aim assist. Personally, I found the default bilinear setting to be the best aiming option for me, and there is an FOV slider. An absolutely fantastic addition, and I honestly don't understand why it took so long for this to become an industry standard on console. Aiming and shooting just feels right, and besides for the frame drops, guns all work, and the ballistics feel just as satisfying as they do on PC. Now for the additions I would like to see. First off, private matches for people trying to run hardcore co-op or competitive is very much needed, considering the lack of a server browser on console. Like I said earlier, optimization is also a very big issue, and crashing does occur much more often than it should. But otherwise, it really is the Insurgency Sandstorm experience. So to close this video, I'm going to talk about one of my most asked questions so far. Is the game worth it on console? And to that, I say it depends. If you're next gen hardware, absolutely, 100% this game at 60fps is amazing and their live service model shows no signs of stop, so we're going to continue receiving content for the game and you're going to get even more value for your money moving forward. As for the last gen, if frame drops and 30fps bothers you a lot in tactical FPS titles, then you might want to hold off and see if things improve with updates. There will be a major patch pretty soon, so just keep following the game and seeing where it's headed optimization and 
and content wise to decide whether or not it really is worth it for you specifically. Right now it's definitely playable and you can still get the immersion slash insurgency experience from it, but it's a little below the bar for what I believe is possible given the engine and development time it got. Anyways, that's all I've got for you guys today. This has been Bobo Rail from the Christopher Beast channel, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Thank you.